I try to make it a bit different every day so that Emily doesn't think about it too much, you know. Like sometimes I'll say, no, it's fine. I ate before I picked you up. And then sometimes I'll go for, no, I'll grab something when you're in bed. Or maybe, mummy's not hungry tonight, babes. You finish it. And then she'll do that shrug, the one she's learnt from watching the big girls at school. She'll toss her plate over her shoulder as she scrapes her plate clean. She'll not ask for seconds. She knows better than that. And later, when we're playing doctors for the thousandth time that week, and I'm lying on our sofa as Emily leans over me, old cowpaw spoon in one hand, plastic stethoscope in the other, close your eyes, mummy. You have a nasty bump on your head. I'll bank this, this meal, this not meal. All the chips and beans I didn't eat, I'll put them in my savings account and I'll float it on the stock exchange. And all those men with their dark suits and their bright ties, pointing and shouting and making signs with their fingers, all those men with their full bellies and their full cupboards, they'll tell me what it's worth. They'll listen to the growling in my tummy and give me half a chapter of an anatomy textbook, two packs of biros. I know the going rates. All those evenings spent under a blanket with the lights out, they've not been wasted. Now I can tell you about every penny. For example, if I brush my teeth only once every 48 hours, the toothpaste tube will last four times as long, right? Well, that's two tubes a year instead of eight. That's four pounds 80 less. That's 15 minutes of an oncology lecture or marking for one fifth of an essay on the adrenal gland. Or maybe instead I'll take it to a second hand dealer. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll take it to a junkyard merchant, a dabbler in antiques. I'll lay it all out on his leather top table. Yeah, here they are. Take a look. Here are the dozen tea bags used three times each. Here's my two pairs of frayed jeans, knees absent. Here's the space where all the tampons I didn't buy don't sit. Have a look at these 200 missed breakfasts. Well, hold them in your hands. Feel them. He'll squint as I put it all down. He'll sniff and suck his teeth and say, what about half an hour's private tuition before a biology A-level? Or as about half a page of notes from a second year kidney function lecture? If you throw in one more freezing winter without a proper coat, I'll give you half a train fare home at Christmas at the end of Emily's first term. Or maybe instead I'll bundle it all up together. I'll throw it all in together. The cracked dirty sealant round the cracked dirty bath. The missing two degrees on the boiler thermostat. The evening spent scrubbing blood from my knickers at the kitchen sink. The excuses. God, the excuses. About haircuts and birthday parties, school trips. I'll bundle it all up, wrap it in the million times I've added up the numbers, had a little cry and then added them up again, and I'll take that bundle and dump it at the feet of some god I've never seen. And when it's been weighed, when he has sifted it, this is what he'll give me. A moment. A golden glowing moment 30 years from now and he'll nestle it down into a matchbox and whenever I need it I will slide open the drawer of that matchbox and there it will be there she will be in perfect miniature a doctor a surgeon a senior consultant. 
she'll be standing at a bathroom mirror undoing her plait. She'll wash her face and she'll rub in a night cream, not a cheap one from a pound shop toiletry set, no, a good one. Charlotte Tilbury or Elizabeth Arden. And then she'll brush her teeth. She will brush and brush until they gleam. And when she's done, when she's brushed as much as she damn well wants to, she will turn on the tap and she will spit the money down the sink.